So that right. much is paradise tonight, Harry. Absolutely terrible. We've got the ring uh, former ring running coach now, uh, two-time premiership coach Gavin Arnold. Coach, how are you afternoon, Gav? Hello, gents. And as we start play in the middle of the ground, it's Michael Gay. He picked it up. A run around, John Miller's in there. We're tracking him today, uh, Vossi. We are, along with Stewie Seeger, Jimmy Cameron, Ben Wells, and Brett O'Hanlon, Matt Clark, Timmy Maverick, and Zach Michelli. As the ball comes down, that was taken. Oh, that was a terrific tackle in the centre of the ground there from the Dales. They're kicking towards the uh, bay end in this opening quarter. No Matt Kramer still. And uh, Mornington kicking towards the car straight in. Usually the goal scoring in here at Frankston Park, as we know. Third man up, umpires found a free kick. It's going Mornington's way. will go to Gay. Go off to Smith straight away. Kicked it inside 50. Coming out. Good, good mark there from the Dales. That was taken there by Mullins, who uh, we thought was shot last week with a knee injury. But uh, he's got up this week, which is terrific for him. Uh, Cam Moon on the uh, member side of the ground. Kicked away from him from Nolan. The ball goes over right out of bounds. Wing position. So the ball ready to come back into play on the wing. Here it comes now. Gay, he should uh, dominate this afternoon, you'd expect. Good play there by Maverick. Just gave the day argue, kicked it up there towards Walk. Walk, a lot of pace as we know, kicked it to the center of the ground, going back with the flow, going back and taking the mark, he's Ray. So Craig Ray has got the ball. Not sure about the hairstyle. He's got a pretty good ability though when he's with footy and hands. He kicks the ball up there towards the 50 metre line. Timmy Mannix at the back. Gives a little handball off. Was nice. Found Muschiari. He kicked the ball to the top of the square. Where's Mullins? He, uh, man, he couldn't take the mark. It was well done by Nolan. He gave the handball off straight away. That was to Haddock. Another one to the outer side of the ground. Haddock gets it back. The old one two runs to the defensive 50. Outer side of the ground. Kicks it up the line looking for Calder. Couldn't take the mark. Mullins. He's the first to recover. Gave a handball off was good. Little Brown Bonner inside was terrific. And he finds Brett O'Hanley who takes the mark. Too far out to score. Sees Timmy Mannix there standing in the pocket. A terrific kick to advantage. And Timmy Mannix went back and took the mark. About 30 metres out from goal. Goes short again. Just to straighten up a little bit and uh, find his target there, I reckon that might be uh, Brad Tad, who took the mark, and he's about, uh, it is, took the mark about 35 metres out directly in front. So a good start there to the Dales, kicking towards the bay end, not a lot of boys here at Car Street this afternoon, conditions just about perfect. Tag and noted goal kick up, not on this occasion, he kicked the ball into the man on the mark, his recovery was pretty good though, coming in there, attacking it hard was McGuire. Joey couldn't uh, do too well with it though. In goes Timmy Mannix and the ball goes over the line out of bounds. 50 metres around from the foul goal. Boundary throwing to take place. No score. First semi-final winner to play next Sunday against Mount Eliza who were beaten yesterday by Frankston YCW. The rampant juggernaut that is YCW. Mornington trying to clear Smith over on the ball. Pack of players develop walks in there for Edifar and the umpire says I will ball it up. You could not have a better day at the football. Last Sunday, seven days ago, it was absolutely freezing up here and freezing all over the ground. But today, beautiful day for football. Ball knocked down for Edifar. Quick kick by Mannix. Inside attacking 50. Mornington player was tackled without the ball and should get a free kick there and it is. And it will be Smoke will take the free kick. It turns it into a free, a free hand pass and Mornington all way. The ball goes up to the wing position, great play there by Muschiari, got in front, has got the mark now at half forward, almost the wing position actually on the member side of the ground, goes long inside 50, Man sets himself at the back, couldn't take the mark, for the ball, there's Woodbridge, outstanding last week, nice little handball to Man, right foot step around the corner, he's kicked it. Terrific start for the lead of foul, and it was that man, Tony Woodbridge, who was amongst the action once again. They've played five minutes in the opening quarter, and it's over for a one straight goal, Mornington yet to score. Four inside fifties to one so far. Uh, Gavin Edafo uh, looking pretty good early. Yeah, it's interesting to watch. No one's uh, no one's changed direction yet. Everyone's playing up and down the lanes. But uh, just at some of these stoppages, if you you watch the Mornington guys, they're run, running to get forward of it and hoping that they're going to get massive advantage out of going the ruck. So if that doesn't work for them, uh, we're going to be exposed the other way. You tip this afternoon, Gav? Uh, I reckon Eddie will win. So up they go. That was a terrific tap out there. He came into the side last week. We'll get him in a sh in a uh, in a minute. Um, so we struggled to 
show it last week. Pete Marshall might uh, be able to find out who it is for us. Michael Gay. Ball comes out there towards Woodbridge. He's already had a couple of telling possessions. Kicks the ball out wide. Finds there in uh, Maverick. Goes in short. Nice work there. That was taken there by Moon. He's got the ball in the half forward flank. Goes inside 50 now. Another nice kick. And they're just holding possession here at the moment. Eden Farrell. They've got the ball about 45 metres out. Up against the boundary line. Thought about going inside there to Maverick. He'll probably go along now to the top of the square. He does so. Up they go, Moon. He got far too much separation. But before the ball, handball comes out. Way too easy there. Going through was tied to the ball. Ricochet off a leg and it went through for a minor score. Richard's problems have been the starts and they wouldn't want to concede too much of a start here. Hennepin with still a chance inside their attacking 50. There's a hand pass and Warrington's just messing around a little bit. They turn the ball over in fact and they hand pass a quick kick and he misses. They're not the ones really missing today mate. Warrington made a balls up right from the start and uh, lucky to get off the hook. So apologies to uh, James Wallison's family who might be listening around the ground. He's wearing number 39, did a terrific job in the ruck last week, in fact, without Cromer in the side. And he's playing again today as Jackson Calder comes over the back, takes a nice mark. He's a long way from home, though, but rather than taking those marks inside, uh, he's forward half of the ground, so Calder plays on, kicks it to the outer side of the ground. Nice kick, Mullins at the fall of the ball, just wants the boundary line, finds it. So great to see him out there, in fact, because uh, he looked gone last week with a knee injury. He was uh, carried from the ground. But he's come up, which is good news. Doesn't even have a knee brace on by the look of it either, which is uh, fantastic because he's a very important player down back for Edifo. Mornington into attack. Half forward flank, 60 metres out from their goal round to the car straight end. Quick kick inside attacking 50, a one-on-one -on -one contest at the top of the goal square. Oh, it should have been, uh, well, it should have been a Mornington goal. Ball just bounced uncommonly there on that occasion. Still a chance for them at the top of the goal square. Clements is in there trying to get the ball out. And the ball finally ends up over the line for a boundary throw in. And that, uh, unfortunately there for Mornington, it just bounced away from Jake Smart, who had the ball seemingly at the top of the goal score on his own, but the ball didn't bounce kindly. Mornington yet to score it if they won 2 eight, ball knocked down. It wants to get a chance here for the ball to be cleared. Picked up by Smith near the boundary line. Was he in play? The umpire said yes, he was. Quick kick. But the mark has been taken by Timmy Mannix, who can clear for Edifar. So he's got the ball, back pocket, Brian May side of the ground, goes in short, Muschiari, terrific he was last week. He's got the free there at half back, as we said, on the other side of the ground, goes up towards Mannix, that was good play by him, he gave Nolan one in the back, Haddock was at the back, handball inside to Gay, another one back off to Haddock, he's got so many likes in the middle, there's Ryan Smith, back to Haddock, Smith can get it back. The Ned Kelly look alive, gives it off there towards Sweet and just waited for the footy. Maverick attacked it. Turnover is going to be costly as Al Harmon sets sail from about 50. She's it's going, back. going, going, and it's gone. So the turnover, morning 2-2, two, two, Laxadaisy in the middle of the ground. And the Eagles made them pay and kicked the goal. That's their second for the afternoon. They moved to 2-2-14. Two, two, Mornington yet to score. With all those handballs through the middle of the ground, mate, they were always one away from screwing that up, and that's exactly what happened. The looping went over the top, the intercept, and uh, got hurt at the other end. It's a big problem for Mornington this time. The starts. So a couple of times against Mount Eliza this year, they just, and they just have a habit of starting badly, and uh, they can't afford to do that because Edifo will make them pay. And they hand on already three, Maverick three, Michiali three. So the ball back in the centre again, good play there it was there by Watterson, won the tap, Cameron, can he gather it, he does, he's got great leg speed, we know that, run to 50, had a flying shot, goal, it's going to go through, it is, a good reply there to the doggies, just what they needed as Michael Voss said, they needed to start all right and they have, they've been able to respond, so they get on the board, one straight six points, AFL 2-2-14, that is on the Bendigo Bank scoreboard. Yeah, so they need a doctor. It's an absolute understatement. Oh, definitely, mate. I think it's interesting at the moment. Obviously, with um, with Warwick Moon not playing, um, they want to throw Nolan down back. So, you know, they're two keys in, in Calder and Will, and you have to do the bulk of the work for him today, where uh, Nolan's been a real good goal kicker all year. So back in the centre of the ground again, Michael Gale. We expect him, obviously, just through his sheer size to dominate this afternoon. It's a hot day here, though. 24 degrees. Not much wind to speak of. Umpire back in the centre of the ground. Mornington kicking towards the car straight in. So there's a, a tap to advantage. Good play there by Woodbridge. He trapped it. Kicked the ball up towards half forward. Man comes screaming out.
attacks the footy pretty hard. Well played there by Paul back into the side this week. Kicked it inside 50. Fell over there. That was Derbyshire. Mornington had got the numbers. They work it out through Seager. Sweeping handball out wide was good. Puts his teammate under pressure though, but he backed up nicely in the form of coach. Gives another handball off, and here it is. Gavin Artico pulled out before the overuse of the handball. Now it's going to end up with Derbyshire. He's got the ball to half forward. Bangs the ball inside. Man takes the mark. He needs to turn around. Wolf screaming for it in the goal square. Fowler's time, mate. It's Fowler's time. <laughs> He's looking so dangerous, man, early. No, he just attacks the footy, mate. He gives them an option all the time. He, uh, he and the big fella there, and Jared Garth, they, uh, they lead strong. They give their targets, or certainly their midfielders and their half-backs who are screaming through the middle of the ground. Plenty to look at when they go forward. So, man, it is for the first third goal. He kicks and he's just missed, so... Still, Elephant on top here in the first semi-final. About halfway through the first quarter. 2 3 15, Mornington, 1 straight 6. In fact, we're 10 minutes into the opening quarter. And Elephant about 8 inside 50s to 4. So far, and uh, just 5 shots to 1. Just not putting the score on the board at the moment. So bringing the ball back into play. That was Dad's kick the ball towards half back. Good attack on the footy again there from the Eagles. Little handball out. Carroll's nice there. He is Brett O'Hanlon. He's already kicked one from long range. And now he takes a mark about 45 metres out directly in front, completely unchecked, Gov. Yeah, well, I think predictability is one thing too. You, you know, Gale is such a big advantage for Mornington that you saw six or seven Mornington guys huddle around him at that kicking. Eddie was smart and corralled him around the outside, knocked the ball to ground, and they found all their horse players inside 50 on the way back. So Brett O'Han has already kicked one goal this afternoon. Just to make it two, usually a terrific kick this way time. He's uh, absolutely sprayed it. Right across the face of goal, there's not a lot of wind as we said out there, but he's uh, kicked it out of bounds on the full, so again, leave, letting Mornington off the hook. Mornington looking to clear from right full back, defending at the Nepean Hall at each end of the ground in the opening quarter. Odafar leading by nine points in the early stages as a long kick comes out. Big Michael Gay goes up, couldn't take the mark, ball on the ground, a chance still here for Odafar with attacking 50. Ball was uh, out somehow, now a hand pass over the top. Uh, tackle by another occasion was Baker who lost control. Ryan Smith just tapping it towards the line. Needs the boundary line and reaches it over the line for a boundary throw. And 55 metres out from the EFL goal. EFL 2 3 15. Mornington 1 straight 6. So on the outside of the ground here. Half full line. Bay end. Ball comes in. Over the back was Paul. Tackled there. That was Ben Wells. We're tracking him this afternoon. Is he had any at this point? None at this stage. So uh, restricted then as well as Paul got into the back of his opponent. Umpire said it was okay. Woodbridge, he got the ball out. Attacking it there was uh, Stephen Miller. Kicked the ball inside 50. Smeaton goes, puts the head down. Just handballs it to no one. Big Paul comes out. Tries to get his foot to, he does. Wasn't a great kick. Derbyshire needs some support. Darcy Walk, what can he do? Goes back towards O'Han and thought about playing on the launching. He's going to go back and have a shot for goal. For about 45 metres out. This is Brad O'Han, this will be his fifth touch and uh, already a goal, already a couple of shots and he's looking like me and he's looking very, very dangerous and Mornington are going to do something to, to curb the ex-Richmond player and Italy star from this year. Uh, Hanlon goes to the top of the goal score, it's not going to be a goal and Mornington I think will get the free kick in front. I think they've conceded the free kick. Uh, so this will be a certain out of goal, Tony. You know, I'm not, not certain. Uh, <laughs> You've been watching the kick, it wasn't. <laughs> Well, uh, 15 metres out, they should kick it, Gav. Yeah? Yes, they should. <laughs> a lot of things should happen in front of that. What you just ask me? <laughs> what are you going out of goes like, coach, what do you think more? So, man, this time, can he make him pay? He does. He was held onto in the goal square and he kicks the goal. So, Nick Mann kicks his second goal for the afternoon. That's goal number three there for Edith R. Aspendale. They move on to 3-3. 21, Mornington 1 straight 6 points, you're listening to RWP, the voice of Peninsula Football. The friendly team at Rapid Tune Mornington have all your automotive needs covered. From logbook inspections all the way through to full services, and an 89 point safety inspection as well. And as a special offer, till the 6th of October, receive your next full general service for only $75. The factory is located at 205 Mornington Tire Road, that's right behind the servo, and next to Horseland. Rapid Tune Mornington, station sponsor. Back in the centre of the ground again, Ed Farrell started well, we've played 15 and a half minutes into the opening quarter, it's the Dales, 3-3-21, Mornington one goal straight, six points, the umpire's got to bring it back, 
and it's a constant frustration of mine and uh, we might talk to Peter Marshall at quarter time of the uh, the bouncing. It's just a little art that used to be, uh, it's a forgotten art I reckon, I reckon we're just better off throwing the ball up, give both Ruckman a clear run at it. There's nobody who likes to see the ball being brought back all the time. Great work there. That was from Watterson. Right foot snap came from the centre of the ground up towards half forward. Trapped there by Jake Smart. He was well tackled though. Jimmy Cameron's down there as well. Good play there by Derbyshire. Gave it back. It's Timmy Maddox kicks it up the line. Joe Haddock. He thought about playing on. So he was grabbed there by Watterson. The umpire gave him the benefit of the doubt. So Joe Haddock's got the ball in the wing position, out of side of the ground, goes up the line, Calder's got three to beat, oh, just walked the ball over the line there, there's Benny Clements. They don't want to play the cold on that, they had a chance to switch that in the middle and they want to go up and down the line, Wellington. So, boundary umpire to throw the ball back into play, Mornington 1 stroke, 6 out of 5, 3, 3, 21, good start. By the 2014 champs, off the pack, Kyler, quick snap towards the top of the goal square. They need a mark not to be. Still a chance for them at the top of the goal square. The ball is out towards the pocket now. Quick snap and just off target there on that occasion by Housel. So Mornington's first behind, 1-1-7, 8 3 at the 15 minute mark. So it'll be Mullins to bring the ball back into play, or is that tag? I reckon it might be tag down there at full back. Okay. So you've got Watterson Watterson standing there. he is standing there on his own, he's been there for a hell of a long time. So he comes through a one on two situation, good play there by Mullins, good use of the body. Probably should have led his teammate there when Lucky finally head off with the pelt. He didn't, so Mornington play is tackled and the ball's locked up. About five metres inside the boundary line, half forward line for the Dogs, kicking towards the Car Street end in this opening quarter. They trail by 14 points. Good play by Wilson again. Darcy walks at great speed. He's got James Cameron on his hammer though, so they'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe there. Overrunning it there was Mullins this time around. Good play there by Gay. Got a handball out. Hate to Smith. He's in trouble. Good play there by Derbyshire. And the aggression at the ball carry at the moment with uh, Aspendale standing out. Darcy Walk was really good there. We got the full contest, eh? Hey? Very, very good. As the ball goes up again, good play there by Watterson. Ball gets tapped down. The tackling's been the feature so far of the Dales. Comes out the right hand one. Gets his right foot to it. Then he's got the numbers. Perceived pressure. Geez, well yeah. done, Dale. He tried to do a little bit too much with the footy, Dale. And he was caught there by a man who gave great pressure. He hasn't got a lot inside 50. So he goes out there towards Gareth now, who you can guarantee will attack it. Goes in short. It was a, not a great kick. Wow, the little tap there to Darcy Walk was terrific. You give him a chance for a hand. Right foot snap around the corner was a ripper. And we moved to four goals, 327 points on 117, 20 points the margin. We've played 18 and a half minutes yeah. on the Bendigo Bank score. Yeah, Joe Hardy a little bit slow getting up there, mate. Got the crunch in that uh, in that contest. 12 inside 50s to five. This is looking absolutely as dangerous as it can be for Mornington at the moment. They are in real trouble. 20 points down, knockout final. They need something to happen really, really quickly, and they need it to happen from the middle because the players who are tracking aren't doing a hell of a lot at the moment. For Ida Farrell, it's a lot more work on that end of the scale. Michael Gay in the centre. Needs to start things off for Mornington. And a good tackle there by Odell, and the umpire says, I'm going to ball it up in the centre of the ground. So Mornington trailing by 20 points. Ida Farrell, 4 3 27. And in fairness, probably should be six goals in front. Mornington down by 20 points. Gay, quick kick. Who's going to tackle him? Not, not many, I wouldn't have thought. Quick kick to half forward. Ball bounces over the top. Well done by Mullins. Knocking at 20 metres forward. Picked up by Wells inside. Attacking 50. It was a good kick, but just the uh, the leading player just let him down a little bit there. Still a chance. I think that might be Turner in the, the half-back line. He just knocked the ball out of the attacking 50 and the ball over the line. Near construction side of the ground. And EFL lead by 20 points. 18 minutes into the first quarter. Be nice to get in there at some point, Gav, I would have thought. The yeah. new rooms are looking shiny, aren't they? Can't believe I'm sitting up here in a dry or doing commentary. <laughs> when you've got that, those beautiful new rooms that nobody's allowed in yet as the ball comes out. So inside Mornington's 50, kicking towards the car street end. They try and buy 20 points. The umpire will come in and throw the ball up. About 35, 40 metres around from Mornington's goal. They desperately need one. We've played 20 and a half minutes into the opening quarter. So up they go. Easily won there in the ruck by Ithvale, uh, James Cameron. He's the goal kicker for the dog so far. Right foot snap around the corner. He's not going to have got enough on it though and the ball goes through for another minor score. So they move on to 1-2-8. 
to 4-3-27. That's on the Benigo Bank scoreboard. Short pass out of defence for Ida Farr. Looking fantastic at the moment. The uh, Premier's from two years ago. Short pass across the face of goal to Mark taken by Steve Mannix who plays on towards tag. Still tucked up in the left back pocket between left back pocket and left half back. Car straight into the ground. Matthew Smith standing the mark there for Mornington. They've just got to try and hold the ball in and maybe try and sneak a goal, but no, it gets yeah. around too easily. That's a poor kick by Tag. He's better than that, so what, and he knows it. What happens on that occasion when Matthew Clark's standing there for 10 minutes on his own, just doesn't give it to him, and then he tries something pretty and goes to the spot that he w w was uh, there in the first place. Ball goes up the wards, full forward. Couldn't take the mark. Right foot snap. Bounds just missed. That came from the foot there of Jake Smart, so it goes through for a minor score. It'll be Brad Tag to bring the ball back into play again. This time he needs to be a little bit more constructive as he kicks the ball towards the uh, member side of the ground. Out comes Manx. That's Tim. Couldn't take the mark. Ball spills out. Tim Manx has got it now. Right foot snap around the corner. He wants Muschiari. He takes the mark at half back. Member side here at Car Street. Right in front of the brand new shiny stands here as the ball goes up towards the wing position. Punched away there by Michael Gay. And the ball goes over the line and out of bounds. I think he did that because he needs a ball to make. Those two are working up and down the ground real well. 27 plays, 9. Twenty-two minutes gone in this first quarter. The Doggies would love one. There's a little bit of a breeze certainly going towards the car straight end in this first quarter. As the ball comes back into play, Paul, he just nudged to go out of it on that occasion. Good play there by Hamlin again. Jeez, he's been good. Kicks the ball. It was a bit of a smother there, though. Kick off the ground. Foot races on. Ryan Smith leads in the race for it. He kicks the ball around the corner. Goes up towards half four. Jackson Corner just too tall there for Mullins. Goes to the top of the square. Needs a mark. They come out two on one. Terrific effort there from the dog. Should have been paid in his. So well done, good ball up and probably the most effective uh, forward entry that they've had all afternoon. It's Dale Wheel and he'll go back and have a shot for goal, probably 30 metres out directly in front. Yeah, ball movement go then. Yeah, definitely. I think um, put a little question mark over, uh, I can't see his number or the floor coming back with the floor. It's always gutsy, but you want to make body contact when a forward's got to sit under it like that and he's already got his man beat. So Dale Wheeler comes in, Mr. Kick Mornington second, he liked it, the minute he left the boat, just what the doggies needed. As we near quarter time, two goals, three, 15, end of five, four goals, three, 27. That is on the Benigo Bank scoreboard. You're listening to Adam Pooh, the voice of Peninsula Football. More and more people with a taste for quality are shopping at Eliza Meats. Kevin and his lean team pride themselves on the finest cuts. From juicy steaks and roasts to high-grade mints and sausages. And Eliza Meats are the gourmet specialists. Inquire about Eliza Meats Spit Hire for 9787-4473. From mouth-watering meal, fit for a king. It's all at Eliza Meats. See our sponsor Kevin at Eliza Meats, 112B Mount Eliza Way, a station sponsor. Dog is into attack again. Here comes Will and takes the mark about 40 metres out. So Michael Gay just having an influence in the center of the ground there with his clearance work. Got a, a long handball to an outside runner who just drilled it straight down the throat there of Dale Wheeler. He's already kicked the goal, so the confidence will be up. It was a lovely kick, the first one, only moments ago. Just to reduce the margin back to a single goal. They're yes. evening up the inside 50 count, so it's now 12 to 10 in fact. It was 12 to 5. They've had the last five inside 50s, Mornington. So, Dale Wheeler. One of two goal kickers this afternoon for Mornington. Has a flying short goal. He fist pumped the middle and left the boot again. Peacock on his own, kicking a ball in where wouldn't he be? Two straight through the middle, 3-3-21. Over for 4-3-27. That is on the Benigo Bank scoreboard. Looking a bit better, Gav, Mornington? Yeah, they are. They got away with that one. If you looked around that contest then, just as Gay was scrapping for the footy, you saw Baker and Wells pull off the contest. Um, took that chance and ran forward, and he got it just a long hand below the toe he was talking about. So, hasn't paid off to him now, but, um, yeah, they've got one out of it. So, it'll be Aaron Paul in the rack against... Oh, that was well, a great right. work there. He uh, got, uh, got, got uh, very, very good height, Paul. Ball comes down. So Mornington's attack on the footage is just a little bit better in the last sort of six or seven minutes as well. So that's surprising that you've been able to hit the scoreboard as a result of that. So it's game on now. Only six points of difference. Guy grabs the ball out of the rack. Kicks it with the left foot. Up there towards the half forward line. 
with some numbers around the footy here. Mountains a free kick. Or is it going to? It's going to the really far Rashman Bar, is it? No, it was uh, sending it down the ground, I reckon. So I reckon it's against Manny Clark. And the relay free kick's going to go down there towards uh, Bill and DeWilder. He's got the ball in the wing position. For the Dogs to send him back into attack again. 26 minutes gone in the first quarter. The Dogs have kicked the last two. Goes inside 50. Court has got his name written all over it. Just two tall. He's going to make life really difficult for Mullins this afternoon. And that's the difficulty that they have without uh, Kramer. That means that they can't send, uh, can't send Jared Garth back, which they'd sometimes do on a taller forward from the opposition. And they're restricted at the moment as Jackson Corner. He's taken a number of contested, a couple of contested marks in this first quarter. He'll have a shot for goal for about 40 metres directly in front. Wind in his back, has a flying shot, pushing across the face, I reckon. So he's led far off the hook, three goals, four at 22. Old far, four, three, 27. Five points of difference, Benigo Bank scoreboard. So Old far. Just looking to steady things up just before quarter time. They've had a fantastic start. Mornington with the last couple of goals. Short pass. Mark Taken in the back pocket. Beautiful day for football. And uh, if you're listening to the game and you want to get down here, just get, get your butts down here because it's a knockout final. Should be a good game this afternoon as the ball is knocked away by Michael Gay. Trying to knock it inside. Taking fifth then tried a bit of a scissor kick there. Not to beat. The NFL side just looking to try and clear. They won't at this stage. The umpire's going to call holding the ball actually. And then if they will get the free kick and they will clear from right half back. They switch play towards Maverick who's got it at centre half back. He goes over the top. Here's a chance for Edifar to go forward. They go through the centre. They go towards half forward. And then leading out there and not taking them out there was Garth. Still an opportunity. Long kick for Edifar towards the top of the goal square. Can they get a mark or can Darcy Walk run into this? Not to be. It's picked up by Smith. Ryan for Mornington. Ryan Smith it was towards Odell. Right back pocket. Just looking a little bit better Mornington. They just need to try and Find the worst man they've created well on the far side of the ground. Get running past the small scrubber now. Quick kick down towards a new construction wing. A chance for Mornington to go for. That's a shocking kick. And the mark's been taken by Timmy, uh, by uh, Steve Mannix. So Steve Mannix runs off now. Half back. Handball to Maverick. Another one to Darbyshire. The old one too was good. Maverick kicks the ball inside. 50 now. Where's O'Hanlon? He got a big push. Umpire said there was nothing much in it. Timmy Mannix at the four. Had it cleared the ball towards the centre of the ground. Clark attacked it hard in the middle there for Ada Farr. They still got possession. The footy over the dogs and they work it out nicely. Here's Odell. Kicks the ball up towards Calder again. Right out. Good use of the body by Mullins to push him under the footy. Ball spills to the back. Turner wants the boundary and the ball goes over the line. The umpire said no need to push him in the back as he did that. And he'll get the free kick. Tommy Turner. And half back. Out of side of the ground. Goes in short. Needs to find a teammate. Does so in Miller. So Miller's got the ball, true wing position, goes into the centre, finds Maverick, another one goes further along, nice play there to Farley. So Lucky Farley's got on the side of the ground here at Car Street, kicks the ball along towards the other side, the Lord's half four, a handling came out, couldn't take the mark, good body pressure on him from Clements and the ball goes over the line and out of bounds, or is it Duds? So uh, one quarter, almost 30 minutes we've played, there's only been seven goals kicked. So we have power to bring the ball back into play. Half forward line for all the Eagles. They'd love to kick another one now. Good play there by Gay, the clearing punch. Running in out there is Bortolo. Ball goes towards the boundary line. Early foul player slung. We'll pick him up in a minute. There's a free kick. It's holding the ball. It's going Mornington's way. And it's going to go down there to Joel Miller. Joel Miller only a couple of touches to him in the first quarter. Just obviously plenty of room for improvement for him. But a long kick by Miller towards attacking 50. And there's a free kick, a free kick for in the back, says umpire Travis Denley, and the free kick will go to Mornington. Someone dead on the line, just being dragged out in the change, boys. Helped uh, after that contest in the Joe Miller tackle for Mornington, though. Mornington. So. Not even gonna not even gonna take the risk there. It just goes back with a left foot top after the side. I was about to say Mornington would have had to kick that 70 metres to get that through. Didn't have the confidence, left foot rushed torpedo on out of play, so at quarter time. It is a five-point lead to Edifar in the first semi-final. 4-3-27. 
Mornington 3 4 22 will be back to talk about the first quarter. You're listening to our other Peter Voice Peninsula Football. She said, Who's coming to you with you? I said, Get about you. She said, We're having a lot of fun. She's pretty hard at the minute. But we're back in the same ground. Well, she just tripped over and did. <laughs> I'm fast playing to do He's talking a lot to get us down over here. No, he makes these all. Big guys. So, with the ball still in the same ground here at Cow Street. The Doggies would love to kick the opening goal of the second quarter. Held on to it without it there was Wilson. Comes out there towards uh, Odell. Kicked it inside 50. We've got the front runners here. Mullins usually pretty cool under pressure. This time he gave it out to tag. This is where the kick needs to be good. Gave it to Wilson. It wasn't good at all. Maverick just, well, it was Derbyshire. In fact, just went with the one arm in there. They want Cameron to give it to Gay. Sold some candy, the big fella. Goes in short. Nice kick. Spots up the teammate. That's Hustle. Goes out wide. He's got play that he likes inside. And he finds him. And good play there from Brendan DeWater. So it's not DeWater uh, who's... Off the ground. Mm. Unless, uh... Yeah, big Botolo. Yeah. So, uh, it's DeWalda. Brendan DeWalda's going to have a shot for goal about 48 metres out. Directly in front. This will be a great start to the dogs. Early far has been able to dominate the first 15 minutes of play in this game. DeWalda goes long. It's not going to get the G. Pack flies. Wells called up. He wasn't there. Well, yeah. it's the deck so that he's been welcomed, was it? <laughs> Tommy Turner comes in. Comedy of errors at the moment as the ball comes out towards Odell. He got to push in the back. Umpire said no. They're able to work the ball out now. Here's Mullins. Oh. There's a shank. Kicked it up there towards uh, the wing position. Handball came now. Hamlin's got it now. Again, it was Mullins who attacked the footy nicely. Goes inside. Attacking the mark there is uh, Mannix. That's Timmy. Kicks the ball beautifully. Uh, not sure what Mullins was doing then. You've got to get on your back now. Attacking the footy there was... Uh, I'm pretty sure Darth called him out of that one, mate. And if you had called him into it, he would have taken the mark, split the contest and run straight through to an open goal. So Adam Symes uh, saw the ball over the line out of bounds. Right forward pocket, outer side of the ground here. Brian May's side. Ball comes back into play. Ball gets tapped down. Matty Clark goes screaming through. Went without it. There's O'Hanlon. He charged sure as well. Could be ping for her and the ball was. And they're out again, Mornington. Handball out was nice. And they're able to work the ball out through. Smith goes out towards uh, half-back. DeWitter come out, couldn't take the mark. For the ball roll was Smeaton. Comes to Calder. Handball back, it wasn't Smeaton. In fact, it might have been Matty Smith. And uh, just an over use of the handball there. And the ball eventually goes over the line out of bounds. Half-forward line for the Eagles. They lead by five points. So you made a change. Uh, we've sent Foley out to, uh, to Calder. So just looking for a bit of help there, there's Gay again, just using his strength, ball hits the deck, James Cameron tucks the footy, lacks a fortune, just went through a hole of the legs, eventually came up there to stands, well he gave the handball off, Good tried to do a little bit too much there, the dogs, that was Hassel, ball comes out there towards Lawford now, kicks the ball towards centre half forward, with the man now in Gay, he sold some more candy, sold another little bit, then had a dance if you don't mind, kicks the ball up towards the 50 metre line, wasn't a great kick, the attack on the footy there was good from Jake Smart though for the dogs, and he locks the ball in 50 metres out from the Mornington goal, 3-4-22 to 4-3-27, then you go back scoreboard. First goal crucial in this second quarter, Mornington into attack, the umpire's going to call for another ball up, four inside 50s to one so far this quarter, and uh, one man we haven't called too much of, you see it, just, we could see him out there, number 47, Todd Woodbridge, had a great game last week, by OG last week. Struggled to have caught him so far at the moment. There's a chance for Mornington, but there's a tackle too hard. Oh, and Paul says it's a first. He's just giving a bit of a rest. That is weak. Pete Marshall, what's coming in that one? A forearm to the head after he got taken down high, and it hasn't been reversed. So Barry Smeaton's got the footy half forward, goes inside, out comes Wheel and oh, got crunched in there. Didn't uh, deserve the free kick by Stevie Mannix, picks it up, just gets a clear wing ball right towards the wing position to his brother, couldn't take the mark. There's Smeaton again, gives a handball out wide, there's Matty Smith, goes inside, was nice, Halsell's got it, gets around on the right foot, kicks it up there towards Wheel couldn't take the mark at the back of the pack. Eight of four need to work, here they are, good handball out, come from Travisher, that was nice to look. Here's another swapping handball. Back to Lawford again. Kicks the ball well up towards the wing position. Sons in the eyes there off guard. Got a push in the back on power. Said nothing in it. Michael Gay just charges through. Members wing position. Attack ball was uh, 
Uh, Dwayne, I reckon it was. He didn't have the footy though. Smeaton working hard in the clinches. Ball goes back towards Gay. Another one. Another handball to Sams. He clears the ball towards her for a back flag. Couldn't take the mark there as well. His recovery was good though. Thumped the ball back. Wonders are with mine tonight. Her forward. Gay bends down. Took a while to get there, but he did. Comes out there towards Lawford. He couldn't get it. Garth picks it up. Kicks it up towards Darcy Walk. He so show some more clean it. Here's he, Marlon. Good play. He's got Hattican support. Gives it back to Marlon now. Darcy Walk just trying to corral. Man goes over to his support. And eventually, good work there by the Eagles. We're able to force the ball over the line out of bounds. Left forward pocket member side of the ground here at Car Street. Oh, no, we're not the deal. He's turning around here at Ryan Smith out here morning to Marlon this side. So the ball comes back into play again. Joe Garth in the rack against Nolan. Ball comes to the back. Taken there by Matt Smith. Kicks the ball out wide. Foot races on. Taylor's yeah. got some work to do. Smart just went over the back of his head. Didn't look. Maddox gets the ball. Handball out. Tried to be a bit cute. Taylor tried to do a little bit too much. Got some numbers here. The dogs. Handball came out from Baker. O'Dell. He gives a handball. Got the word Smith. Coughed it up. Yeah. Rides him into the ground. The power lets the game go. And comes in and calls for a ball up. Wing position out of side of the ground. Right in front of our commentary position here at the Castro Oval. So still a five-point lead as it was a quarter time to lead a foul. Both sides have not registered a goal in the score. Haven't registered a score in actual fact. Here's a chance for Mornington Smart. Goes inside attacking 50. It's a two on two contest down there. Clements has got to get to the full of the ball. He couldn't on that occasion. Still a chance. He's on the right foot. He'll get the hand pass out. Still a chance here for Mornington inside attacking 50. A quick kick. And that is a goal. And I've got no idea. He kicked that one. It was smart, was it? It was a quick kick. He was tackled as he got rid of it, but still managed to get an effective kick away for a goal. So Mornington lead. For the first time of the day, 4-4-28, 8-5-4, 27 seven minutes into the second quarter. So that's four goals to one. At uh, the halfway mark of the opening quarter, the Dogs have kicked the last four to lead by a point. We've played seven minutes. That's on the Bendigo Bank scoreboard. The ball's back in the middle of the ground. Michael Gay having a significant influence on this footy game. Bordeaux Hamlin's now in the middle. So up they go again, throwing the ball up, don't you just love it, goes straight up, gives both Ruckman an opportunity to win it, comes out there towards Baker, he had a hand in the last one, just put his head down and went hard, he's got a free kick down there, so they're first in for the footy at the moment, the doggies, their intensity's lifted, the handball off wasn't great, but his teammate under pressure there in duds, but he was good enough to kick the ball up towards Calder, that was better played by Mullins, having to use his body to force Calder under the footy. And the ball eventually goes over the line out of bounds. About 60 metres away from the doggies goal, kicking towards the Bay Street end here in this second quarter. Timmy Maverick hasn't had a touch in this quarter. It's seven in the first quarter. Mornington have done well just to, to care of his influence because he's very good at setting up for all the fouls. The ball thrown back into play. The umpire's picked out a free kick. And he has. It's a free kick for over the shoulder. It will go to Mornington. And it will go to Wells, and it goes long towards the top of the goal square. Carl will be takes the mark, in fact, a little bit further. It'll be at 35 metres out from Dale Jackson Carter. Directly in front, kicking towards the beach end on the pan high end of the ground in this second quarter. And Mornington, after conceding four of the first five goals, all of a sudden a chance if Carter can kick this to go to a seven point lead. I think that's what we're talking about at the break guys, was the ball was put out in front, you got a chance to run and jump, but Marlon's had no chance to get up there with him. Spot on guard, as Corey goes back and goes whack, kicks the goal, that's his uh, first goal for the afternoon, Jackson Calder, he's looked dangerous though, and as Michael Voss said, Mornington extend their lead, they've kicked the last four, they move into five goals, four, 34 to four goals, three, 27, that is on the Bendigo Bank scoreboard. Interesting how it's changed. Um, you can call it cheating or call it whatever you want, but smart at this last contest that was down in front of us. He ended up the goal kicker, but as soon as the ball was thrown in and the contest went, he sucked forward. Um, some people call it cheating, but he got down to that next contest, picked up the crumbs, ended up snapping that goal. So those ones are starting to fall Mornington's way. It wasn't early, but they're starting to now, so it'll be interesting to see how much luck they have for the rest of the day. Eight inside 50s to two this quarter in favour of Mornington. Yeah, we're dominating. It's this break in the centre of the ground. It's starting most of it. Baker's lifting his game as well. Didn't have much of him in the first quarter. He's on the ball now. He's the one with Maverick. 
So uh, as we pointed out, Maverick has a little touch. There's Gay again, was able to get the tap, but again it was a bounce that didn't go uh, that favoured the Mornington Ruckman. Good tackling there, came there from O'Hanlon, right foot kick, geez, they need to respond here. Man, he came out hard, good attack on the footy there, was Adam Symes, he won't take a backward step. Go a little handball, right, Haddock, gives it out to Symes, now he chucked it, I reckon. But good uh, positional football there from the Dogs as it comes out towards Baker, who's now having an influence, kicks the ball inside, really looks the goods in this situation, and he took the mark. So the Mornington forwards now. With kicks to advantage, it's just too easy. Little chip oh, inside, this lovely, and Jake Smart takes a grab about 40 metres out directly in front. It's interesting how many taps there's been today, guys. It's a perfectly sunny day. A lot of guys are feeling the pressure, so rather than take the footy and get rid of it, they're all just palming it off. So, Jake Smart's had a kick one goal this afternoon. And he's been uh, a well improver in the back half of this season for the Dogs. There's a few clubs that nibbled around him in the pre-season, Jake Smart. And that's probably why, because he's a goal kicker. He's kicked his second for the afternoon. The Dogs extend their lead. Six goals, a four. They are now to four goals straight. Up to 14 points. Benny Go Bank scoreboard. You're listening to RWP, the voice of Peninsula Football. Absolutely on your doorstep, the Peninsula's best-kept secret, Melora, the house and its beautiful gardens. So, a day here... Morning coffee when you arrive, a long guided snoop inside an amazing house packed with surprises, lunch and an accompanied ramble through the magical garden. To explore this secret place, telephone 5975 2027 or visit us on the web. Put in blue and all is revealed. Ball comes down again, good play there by Woodbridge, just tapped it for it. Out of fire, Aspendale must respond. Oh. Out. And he's right on, keep an eye on it. I am. I reckon Baker's in there and I reckon Timmy Maverick's in there as well. So uh, they're all starting to come in now. Uh, DeWitter, he's in there on the crack. I thought there might be a chance. As the ball's on half forward line, member side of the ground swings back into play. Muschiari over the back, gains some value, valuable metre exert. In fact, probably about 10 metres and it's about 50 metres out from the Eagles goal now. They try six goals, 440 to 4327. Bendigo Bank scoreboard. We've played 12 minutes into the second quarter. As the ball comes back in, Paul versus Gay. Good play there by Paul just to keep the ball oh, going. Three kicks should have gone there right. to, uh, to Timmy Maddox and it's not. It's going well it is. Just uh, the wrong arm there for the minute. But uh, Timmy Maddox has got an opportunity to kick the goal. And uh, it's an understatement, Gov. They've kicked uh, the last five, Mornington, so yeah. they need to get one. They've been running all over them in the last, uh, or the last 25 minutes. Twelve and a half minutes gone. Timmy Maddox hasn't hit the scoreboard yet. Outstanding player. We all know that. He's been well managed by his coach this year. Timmy Maddox has a shot at goal and it hits the woodwork. So we saw it three times in the last quarter yesterday in Sandoval's win over Sorrento. The ball gets brought back into play. Nicely taken there, Adam Sands works the ball up towards the outer side of the ground. Wow. Leads a flow, three kicks going to go there to Baker, I reckon. Four about paying the advantage, the umpire. Probably a good thing to bring it back. And it's Chris Baker who's got the footy. But half back, as I said, having a real influence now after a quiet first quarter. Goes towards the side of the ground. Gay just trip, put one mitt into that contest. Tapped it up to himself and took the mark. Kicks the ball inside now. Well, and oh, should have held off. Now, right, going back with the flow of the ball was Jimmy Cameron. Should have been a bit more protection as the ball goes towards the boundary line. Right forward pocket for the dogs. And Benny Clement sees the ball over the line and out of bounds. So 14 and a half gone, 12, mar 12 points to margin in favour of Mornington. We're now close to play Madelaise next Sunday. Here in the preliminary final, of course, in the Premier League Grand Final next Saturday, Rosebud against Somerville. That will be an absolute bumper crowd, especially if you're a day like this. Beautiful day for football. Quick kick for it to fail. Outside the defensive 50. Spurring the ball now. Maverick with his first touch of the second quarter. He gets a hand pass out now. Chance for a foul. Through Woodbridge. And then he stops and pops. And he's going to go around about three of them. He goes towards half forward. The ball is knocked away. A chance now for Maddox. Tim it was. Gets a hand pass over the top towards Tag. And he can control this to himself. He's got a chance. He's in the left forward pocket. He snaps it down. He puts it through. Great goal by Brad Tag. Great goal for a foul. The first goal in the round. The margin is back to six points. AFL 5 4 30, 4 Mornington 6 4 4. It was a class goal by Brad Tag. 
Yeah, it was. Uh, it was terrific play by him. He's looking at his gifted. We've known that. He's been gifted since he was about uh, 15 years of age, kicking goals in, uh, or 16 years old, kicking goals in seniors footy. And representing his league, he's a talented player. I love him as a forward. He plays a little bit back as well and played predominantly there this year, but uh, nice to uh, see him playing forward and kicking goals up against the Bergeron left foot kick. He needed to kick it though because he had his uh, full forward screaming out running at him and uh, he decided to go over his head. Start to swing the interchanges now. He's uh, here's another side. bad bounce. It's just a joke. He's got to stop. He's got to use common sense here and decide to throw the ball. He'll be stopping at half time, says uh, the umpire boss, Peter Marshall. I'm not saying anything about the umpires. No, <laughs> the ball goes up. Now I've got a decisive tap, so the umpire forced to come in and throw the ball up again. A couple of players give it back to him. So this time throws the ball straight in the air. Paul, oh, he got wind in the back. Has to be a free kick to Michael Gate. Well picked. Thought about giving the advantage and then brings it back. So Michael Gate has got the footy. Center of the ground. Doesn't mind kicking it. Probably should think about it though after that. Oh, sure, he ball towards forward. <laughs> Jackson Collard came out now. City kick. Opens up Jimmy Cameron and runs inside 50. Has a bounce up against the boundary line. Flying shot at goal. Kicks it straight over the umpire's head. Terrific play there by the dog. Staying in the centre with Gay. Jake Smart with a clever kick off the ground. Went over the top and Jimmy Cameron was able to run onto it. And they moved to seven goals. 446 to 5. 434. Back out. 12 points, Gov. That's a cracking goal from that uh, that pocket right in front of the Dolphins' home rooms. is always hard for a right footer, and he's put that through nicely. Matty Clark's still very quiet, Tully. Very quiet. 16 and a half gone. How many has he had? Just one. One, one kick. How many has Joel Miller had? Uh, Joel's had four. Wow, they're all over those two. Oh, wow. Uh, just nullifying yeah, just 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 a couple. Couple. James Cameron just the five, Ben Wells just the five are the ones we're tracking for Mornington. So the both of touch the ball in that contest. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So the umpire have to restart play. Plenty of tackling going on in the middle there. So the umpire throw the ball up in the centre. Joel Miller was the one that gave it back. And he's the one that attacks the footy again, Miller. That was good play. Baker goes crashing through, couldn't get it. Craig Gray kicks it up there towards half forward. Tag went over the head, wasn't great. Ryan Smith kicks it to the other side of the ground. Good play, and Helson takes the mark. He wants to move the ball quickly, and he does so now. Calder comes out with the big mitts, couldn't take the mark. James Cameron, the fall of the ball. The umpire said he'd gone over the line out of bounds. Dodds gets up slowly, boys. Morn Mornington already won down with uh, that knee right on the, uh, the quarter time sign, so... Don't want another one to go down for him. So we're about uh, 60, 70 metres around from Mornington's goal. They lead by 12 points. We've played 17 and a half minutes into the second quarter. First semi-final. Winner, of course, plays Mount Liza in the prelim next week. As the ball gets tapped down, kicked towards half forward. Going back with the flow, the ball was Mann. Couldn't trap it. Derbyshire at the four, Mannix, sweeping handball, they're out here now, Brad Tag, what's he going to go? Right. There's a crack at goal, bouncing again. Good play to Brad Tag, he's kicked two goals in a couple of minutes, and uh, again, he had put on him and they sat and decided to go over his head for the second time. The best thing I was, he did not even look. He looked straight for where the goal and power was and went power. So he knows where the goals are. If it's Brad Tag having a shot, you wouldn't mind it. So they close the gap to six points again. Seven goals, 436 to six goals, 440. 18 and a half gone in this second quarter. Well, up in the centre of the ground, Gay. Just turns his body there on the, uh, on the ruck contest. And now the ball cleared, cleared by Maverick towards half forward for Odafar. Another chance for the man. If he can pick the ball up, he might be a chance. Now the ball's going to be locked up about 50 metres out from the NFL. Going right half forward flank. They're going to the car straight into the ground in the second quarter. It's Mornington. Six of the last eight goals in the contest. They lead by six points in the first semi-final. Ball knocked down. Tag. He had it. Lost it. Wanted a free kick. Didn't get it. Here's a chance for Matty Clark. He runs through. Put down the glasses. No more in this instance, but no on that occasion. Matty Clark had a little bit more time than what he thought, actually, and he missed. I'd say Benny Wells would be up here and kick that because it was, let's just call it a very sheepish attack on the ball when it had to be won then. Uh, so there goes Smith. He kicked it to himself. He screwed it up, but uh, fortunately for him, he's able to uh, recuperate. 
House has got the ball now at half back for the dogs. Member side of the ground here at Castle. It goes up towards the water. One grab two takes the mark on the wing position. So the dogs looking hungry at the moment. They'd like another one. Kicked it up there towards Wheel and ran out. Couldn't take the mark or creep. He likes it. He climbed it. The umpire said play on. Gets on the left. Kick was terrific. Good play there by uh, Angus McGuire at the foul at the handball. Comes out to corner. A little right foot banana. Kicks the goal. So the dogs get the run back and they move to eight goals of 4.52 with six goals, 5.41. Back out to 11 points, 20 minutes gone. Benny Go Bank scoreboard. You're listening to Ardabu Pro, the voice of Peninsula Football. Well, thanks to RSO is one of the leading large hospitality clubs in Victoria and has a huge range of facilities for your enjoyment. Bistro, bars, function areas, gaming, kino, tab wagering and sports bet, welfare, cafe, entertainment. It also provides facilities for a range of sporting organisations and community groups. Visit and experience it yourself. The Frankston RSL at 183 Cranbourne Road in Frankston. For more, call 9783 2288, a station sponsor. So I see you on the ground. I'll jump for a bounce, I'll jump for a bounce. Oh yeah, he'll bounce it, you can go and tell it. As uh, the umpire's boss has got his heads in his hands. Oh, that was magnificent. Straight up and over it went. That was a terrific bounce on that occasion. Unfortunately, well, it's one in six that lands. As Halsey again gives it there to go. He's playing over. Kicks the ball inside. 50 again. Couldn't take the mark there. Was Will and at the back of the pack there's Calder again. He couldn't get it. Mullins working there. Taking the footy there was Clements. The umpire's found a free kick. It's going all far's way. It'll go on there to Stevie Mannix. No. Mullins has got it. He gives it to Stevie Mannix now. He runs towards the other side of the ground here at Car Street over. Oh, he's run oh. too far. You know what calls that? If you have looked down the field, boys, you've got the forwards for all fails still backward of centre, and he's trying to run the ball outside 50. He's got no one to kick to. So this allows Jackson Calder to have a shot for goal. He'd be uh, only 40 metres out, I reckon maybe 35. Up against the boundary line, though. The umpire is setting himself in the goal square. Beautiful kick of the footy, Jackson called up. He's kicked two goals this afternoon already. Coming in for goal number three. Starts at left, wants it to bend. It does, but a bit early. Or a bit late, in fact. And the ball goes through for behind. So we'll move on to eight goals. Six to six goals, five. Or eight, five to six, five, I should say. Twelve points the difference. That's the Bendigo Bank scoreboard. We'll play 22 minutes into the second quarter. Well, I'm right. If you're monitored at the moment, you'd be happy with uh, with what your key defenders are doing because between O'Hale and Garth and me and their bigger bodies, they're not you know the most mobile breaks, and they're all wanting to keep themselves a little bit closer to goal. I think with the heat and the bigger ground, so they need to get themselves sorted up and stake it up the ground if uh, if they have a chance of bringing the ball inside 50 as much as they need to. Well, that's a terrific mark. Matty Clark kicked the ball towards half back, but Matty Smith came in and took a really nice mark. Goes into the centre of the ground. Nice. He's got somebody out wide. There is Ryan Smith. Gets to him now. Kicks it out. Is that Seager? Couldn't take the mark. Ball spilled over the back. Around Angus McGuire now in the wing position. Goes up towards Craig Ray. Good kick. Should have taken the mark. Gets a free kick for one high anyway. So they've run out in the goal square now. Ray tried to do a little bit too much, fortunately. Gets under the left foot. Jordan Davishai had it comes out, tag again. What can he do? Gets pushed in the back, lays on top of it, should be pinned for holding. No. He's a superman. Umpire says, give it back to me. I throw the ball up, grab the ball. And uh, so Mornington were apprehensive about going in the middle of the ground. Gav in the first 15 or 16 minutes of the match, but certainly looking to do it consistently yep. now. And it's opening air far up every single time. So just a break in play as the blood rule is in effect. Jay Haddock is being sent from it. He's side leading. That goes 5.53. All foul 6.5.41. Almost 24 minutes gone. Umpire winning the restart play. About 30 metres out from the Eagles goal. They'd love one here. Little tap away in the back. Nolan put himself under pressure. Trying to do a little bit too much. Ball goes towards the bench line. Eventually it spills over. And the left forward pocket. Member side of the ground. The umpire throw the ball back into play. Mornington just trying to try and hold out here. It was a poor kick by Ryan Smith, which has forced this inside attacking 54. Eight of foul. Crucial three or four minutes coming up before court, before half time. Michael Gay just chucks it on the boot and goes out as far as he can. It was about three and one there in favour of Eight of foul. They all went up. No one stayed down. Quick kick by Hassel towards Cardinal. Get the free kick. Oh, they got 
to win his outright with 40 metres on his own. He goes to him now, he tries to get back and he will take them after Robert. He, I don't know how he got so far up his own there, but he's 50 metres out, so it's going to take a big kick nevertheless. Well, the dice again, and they paid off. So, to Wetter, from right on 50, he goes high, he goes towards full forward, it bounces, it's going to be rushed through by Darcy Walk through for a point. So, Mornington up to 8.654, all the fall 6.541, about 25 minutes into the second quarter, and now a turnover. And I tell you what, if you look a bit further up the ground, Mascarani's up here and he's, uh, he's got his hands on his head wondering why didn't you kick it out 50 metres to me right on the boundary line in the safety. Terrible play there by the Eagles, so the kicking came from Darcy Walk. He went short to a 50-50 contest and James Cameron just became the third man in and took the mark. So he'll go back and have a shot for goal. He's already kicked one, James Cameron, and make that uh, two goals. So that's a uh, massive cost. One mistake there to the Edifar Aspendale boys now. Six now, 60, is it? Edifar uh, Aspendale, 6-5, 41. So they've opened up a 19-point break now. He's kicked two this quarter. He has, you're right. He's kicked three. Jackson Corners kicked a couple, so is Warren and Smart. So four goal kickers for the Doggies at the moment. Their forwards are all having a major impact on this contest. Edifar Aspendale, Brad Tag has two both this quarter. And Nick Meehan also has a couple. I can see why you're not coaching anymore, Gav. <laughs> Uh, 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 just a beautiful day, you just t turn the ball over so easily and it'll fail, it's just, it's just crunch time. Exactly, well, all the goals that he failed missed as well, haven't helped themselves. So the ball comes out towards Muschiali, there's a free kick, it's going down there to Elifail, and it's going to go to Muschiali. So he's got the ball in the center of the ground, the Eagles need to respond now, and they need to do it quickly as they kick the ball inside, 50, flying high there was Garth, couldn't take the mark, ball punched down, tucked the footy there was good, that was uh, Benny Wells who got around onto the other side of the ground, the member side of the ground, finds Halsall in the wing position, they're off and running now the dogs, go up to all the Lord's Clements, couldn't take the mark, punches the ball forward, gained a little bit of mortgage but not many. And the ball goes over the line out of bounds. Members wing here at Car Street. It's the Dogs, 9, 6, 60. Leading in foul, 6, 5, 41. 19 points the difference. 27 minutes gone. A goal all the way crucial. 19 point lead to Mornington after they were one goal to fall down early. Eight of the last 10 goals in this game and uh, they're looking okay. Heading towards half time. Knocked down for NFL. A chance here for Mornington through Millard is who picks it up. He goes with a quick kick, but it was smothered. Tries to knock the ball forward. Comes back out of far's way. Out towards where Chris Hulk and the Mornington hierarchy are standing, and the ball goes over the line. New construction side of the ground. Mornington 9660, out of far 6541. The margin is 19 points, and we must have only seconds to go in this second quarter. Yeah, you'd think so as the ball comes down again. So uh, this time it goes over the line, out of bounds, so the boundary. Throwing will occur, as Vossi said, right in front of the Mornington coaches' box on the member side of the ground. 19 points of difference in favour of the Dogs. Bendigo Bank scoreboard. Michael Gay has dominated. This time he wasn't able to get a decisive tap. Lawford with his head over the footy. There's Gay again just trying to charge his way through. The ball's held onto him by Alan Paul. And the umpire will come in and throw the ball up again. So we're still locked here on the members' wing here. 60 playing 41, 19 points the difference, up they go, Gay again was able to get some clearance, tucked the footy there, was the EFR power, I'll pick him up in a minute, he got ridden into the back of Stanley Maddox I reckon, and the EFR will come in and throw it up again, so the dog's just working it closer to go, third man up, they need it, they need to do a bit more of it too as the ball goes towards the wing, Johnny Derbyshire, led to the ball there by Barry Smeaton, and over it goes. So Smeet and Derbyshire just having a bit of a crack at one another as they come back to position. Both a couple of rough nuts. The ball comes back into play. This time it's Paul in the ruck. Third man up again. That was Mannix. Go with to Tim. Timmy Mannix got tackled holding the ball. So just a bit slow and the dogs want to go straight away. Good play there, Paul. It was Joe Miller, but he coughed it up. Kicked it uh, up towards the 50 metre line now for Edifar. Good play there by Sainz. He's got some plenty of time. Gets the ball from defensive 50. Goes to the outer uh, wing position. Ball spills down. Dogs, he couldn't get it. Woodbridge goes backward to Tim Maddox. Tim Maddox kicks the ball inside. Lovely kick finds Jarvisha. So he's got a couple of players there. Goes in short looking for and finding Tinny Maverick. He's too far out to score from there, I reckon. 
Oh, he doesn't have a loop. No, he's, a, he's not a big kick over our team, Maverick, so uh, he's going to have to kick it every bit of 50 51 metres. As Chris Baker, the taller option, comes to stay on the mark, tells Barry Smeaton just to move up a bit. So I need this one, the Eagles. I desperately need it. So Timmy Max is kicked from about 60 metres in the end and didn't get the journey, nor did he get the accuracy, but there goes John Garth wow. at the fall of the ball. He was thrilling around. Somehow Garth was at the fall of the ball. Left foot snap and kicked the goal. Well, Marilyn and Sam's elected to try and keep that alive and let, rather than let it go through for a point and they've conceded a goal. Seven goals, 5.47 to uh, nine goals, 6.60, 13 points the difference, 13 minutes gone in this second quarter. And that'll do wonders to Jared Garth's confidence, you would have thought he hasn't had a great game, I wouldn't have thought so far, Garth. No, definitely not, I think those guys, you know, maybe the heat's getting to them, maybe the bigger ground, but they need to do a bit more work, those are the three keys, you know, handling Garth and, and me, and I know a couple of them have kicked some goals, but they're not getting their hands on it enough as they get to half forward. So we're just waiting for the pill to come back into the guts. Where's the footy, Pola? Here it is. <laughs> I just took uh, Jeff Walton from the Kringle Football Club uh, a week and a half to go and fetch it. He's not the quickest anymore, well. Especially if he had to get through that little gate. <laughs> yeah, and he had to put his can down first as well. <laughs> so uh, he can't get through that little gate. So the ball's in the middle. We're going to bounce it again. Let's see how this one goes. Oh, oh straight back up. So you're talking about Tully. He's on fire. Yes. The ball comes out there from Maverick. Oh, geez, he put his head over the hard there. was Joey Miller. That was terrific attack on the contest. And the umpire will come in and throw it up in the center of the ground. 13 points the difference. 0 5 7 5 Mornington 9 6. 31 and a half ground. Ball goes up. Woodbridge was third man up. Attacking the footy there was McGuire. He takes the ball to ground. The umpire left with no choice but to ask for the ball back and he'll restart playing the center of the ground. Very late quarter, 32 minutes. We have had a blood rule, but and we're, I suppose we've had a few goals as well. Six goals to three in this quarter, nine goals, but still 32 is a long quarter. Miller got the ball out. The right crowd went around the ball. The umpire said no, Michael Gain short. He's got Seager, oh. who has had a bit of a dirty day, a data former coach actually at the moment. Here's a chance now for Mornington, they go inside attacking 50. Carter, he was in the middle of that contest and somehow got his hands in the ball and took the mark. And he'll go back after the siren to put Mornington at 19 points clear. He's only 35 metres out from goal, he's pretty much directly in front and really... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. What the hell was that? Was Pete climbing over the bench. He wants to get down and tell him to stop bouncing the ball, I think. Oh. Someone's playing silly buggers with us, but Carter has the shot. It floats towards the post, and it just sneaks in and went for a goal. So a goal right on half time for Mornington. And Jackson Carter's kicked his third goal for the half. 10-6-66 Mornington. 7-5-47 EFL at half time. Well, let's uh, have all the goal kickers at half time. 